Hello and welcome. It's uh, Brett Taylor here and I have Derek Gillespie with me today. Derek is from Oshawa, Ontario and has 10 years of experience on the Canadian Tour with two championship titles and recently added a victory at the Seaforth Country Classic Open which was an unofficial event on this year's Canadian Tour schedule. Derek was also the big break winner in 2009 and was recently featured on the cover of Score Magazine. Kind of a nice article there if you uh, want to check it out. Today I'll be talking to Derek about the mental side of golf. Thanks for joining me, Derek. No problem, Brett. Um, I just want to talk, start off a little bit talking about you know, your mind shift that, that you seem to have gone through a few years ago. I know you were you know, playing half-decent pretty well and, and uh, even had a couple of wins on the Canadian Tour. And I think before your car accident, you, you already started to kind of refocus on golf and started to... Uh, you know, you reached out to, to Doug Smith. Can you talk about what made you decide that it was time to go and look at uh, options to improve your mental game? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I had a few years there where I was uh, really struggling to, well, to make money for one, but it, it felt like I was hitting the ball okay. Um, and it, it just seemed like my physical game was, was okay, but I just wasn't putting any numbers up. And, and I remember... Uh, driving back after first stage of qualifying school, I guess it was probably uh, two years ago, and I missed by one or two. And I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, what just happened? Like, there was no way I should have possibly missed this Q school, and, and, and I did. And, and I said, well, maybe it's mental. I just don't know it. So I finally uh, cracked, and, and I called Doug Smith, just a local guy, which um, – was at the Oshawa Golf Club when I was a junior, and and he'd always asked me to, to come and work with him, and I'd always been stubborn that way, thinking that, you know, my, my physical ability could, you know, get, get me to the PGA Tour, and, and uh, you know, after eight years of playing professional golf, it never really did, so I called him and um, kind of worked with him pretty much all winter uh, a couple winters ago, uh, pretty hard a couple times a week. Um, and I saw immediate, uh, uh, I guess, results when I went back to Arizona and uh, won, won a couple mini-tour events. And, and then, unfortunately, uh, last year, I uh, got in that car accident, which put a little delay in, the, in everything. But, you know, once I uh, was healed up and uh, was ready to go again, I, I, uh, I you know, I missed finals of, of uh, PGA Tour Q School by, by a shot. So after really not playing for five and a half months, so... Um, obviously, the mental game is is a huge part of of the game, and um, I look, you know, I'm still working with Doug, and I look forward to kind of uh, sharpening my tools uh, with him. Yeah. Well, so, and that that was quite impressive to come back from that car accident and do so well at Q School, and even the back end of the summer there. So, good for you on that. Right. Yeah. You, you know, uh, you maybe the the whole break thing mentally kind of had me refreshed, but yeah, you know, I remember. At first stage in Charlotte, I was uh, limping around pretty good and was rolling around at night in pain. But, um, you know, it's funny that my golf was good, right? Um, yeah. Maybe it was a little, uh, you know, nothing to lose uh, mentality. Um, just go out and see what happens. But, um, you know, right right when I started to pick a club up, it, it felt good and, and my game was, was, was pretty sharp. Yeah, well, good for you too. Um, so, you know, staying with the, the topic of Doug, you know, what... So what did you focus on with Doug, or what did he have you working on in that, uh, in yeah. that winter? Well, um, well, I guess the, there's been different things you've been working on, but, you know, uh, I guess the first thing would be, I guess, recovery from all these uh, failures that I've had on the golf course. You know, I started out early in my career winning and, and making a lot of money and playing well, and, and uh you know, it's almost like when you when you get on a uh, downward spiral, it just kind of keeps going, and and you lose confidence, and and uh, it just it's hard to get yourself back up on that positive swing. So, um, you know, what? we were just trying to uh, focus on where 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 I want to go, which was the PGA Tour, but but also my life in general. You know, once I think I started to. Um, not see results and start to fail and miss Q school every year that, um, you know, you don't know it, but you kind of get a little depressed. You, you, you lose confidence in yourself. But, 
um, you know, my life was, you know, I'd go down to Arizona. I had to kind of have the same routine, which was not working, obviously, right? Right. So that was one of our plans was for me to stay up here in Oshawa and work just on the mental game for a few months and, and, and then go down, right? Whereas before, I'd spent pretty much half the year in Arizona, half the year up here, never really taking time off and, and, and just looking at the big picture. And, um, you know, my life in general was just kind of getting out of control. I had no stability with with girls. <laughs> you know, I couldn't really, I've always had a fear of commitment with women, but yeah. you, know, you don't really need to be kind of talking to five different girls in the same city and, and, and stuff like that, which really wears in your golf game, but you just don't know it, right? Yeah, sure, a bit of dist- distraction for sure. Yeah, subconsciously, it really has an effect. You just, uh, you know, you're wondering why you're not making putts or you're hitting off the world. But, you know, maybe at the same time, if you just look at your life and if you're balanced and happy, it seems like things go your way, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. I mean, you, I think really what you're saying, you know, is if you want change, you need to change what you're doing. And, and it sounds like you were in a bit of a rut and you were kind of in a routine, if you will, with going down to Arizona and whatnot and the things that you were doing and, and you weren't improving. So sounds like Doug was trying to get you to, you know, get out of that routine and, and start fresh, if you will, on, you know, a new track and a new thought process of, of uh, right. thinking about success. You know, I, I, yeah, I was friends with Doug before this, but I remember, you know, I guess I was a, a mentor of Mike Weir or, or whatever, and we chatted, and I remember him telling me, like, you, if you want to be successful, you you got to be willing to do things that people aren't willing to do, right? you got to do different things. And it just felt like I was just getting, I was in a trap where I just couldn't get out. And, um, you know, uh, and I think Mike was bang on about that, right? This is, man, this is going back 10 years ago when he said that. But, sure. Um, but yeah, once I started talking to Doug, it just kind of freed me up mentally and just kind of made me realize that I need to be doing things differently. It wasn't my talent that was holding me back. It was just everything else. Okay. So, you know, how, I guess, how do you think differently now than you did, say, three or four years ago? Are there any examples that you might uh, have? Well, I just cleaned up my act off the course. For one, I, uh, you know, don't really drink booze anymore, you know, special occasions or something, but... You know, I, I uh, pretty much off that, I uh, pretty, uh, you know, I guess when I was successful early in my, my career, I was disciplined with uh, respect to, you know, diet or, or practice rounds or w- what I did practice-wise. I just had structure, and I just felt like I I had no structure for a few years, and, and um, you know, my game kind of uh, was, was obviously struggling, right? So just more structure in my life now like you know I've got a routine that I need to do today to go to go to the course I've got I've got things that I uh, you know at least I'm going there for a purpose right like I've got stuff to work on and, and do before I can get out of there and I think that helps right and, and I think that um, that I understand myself like golf swing wise now where before I was you know trying to you know when you're when you're not hitting it great you you People always want to help, but you know what? That's probably the, <laughs> one of the worst things you can do is just kind of get a tip from your buddy, and uh, and it just kind of gets even uh, uh, hitting it worse, right? Yeah. So it might work for that day, but you know, down the line, it's probably not going to be. Uh, it's probably a quick fix, right? But yeah. uh, I just listen to myself now. I don't really listen to any swing coach. I just kind of look at my ball flight, and I kind of know what I'm doing. I mean. You know, you kind of slip into the same tendencies as at the end of the day anyway, right? So yeah. as long as you, uh, as the player, knows their own tendencies in their golf game, they shouldn't get too far off. It's probably something a little, uh, probably smaller than they actually think. Right, right, right. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, with your most recent win there at Seaforth, can you talk a little bit about your mindset and maybe even specifically in the final round if... You know, you've kind of, obviously it sounds like in the past in few years you were uh, getting a little off track and now you're a bit back, more, more back on track. Is there anything that comes to mind for you that, you know, that you maybe thought about a little differently playing that event? Uh, yeah, you know what, I, that was kind of a, a pleasing win to me just because, you know, I'd missed the Monday qualifier for Canadian Open. I, uh, in Winnipeg the week before, on number 15th, I went from like, um, on the 15th hole, I made a quadruple bogey, you know, going from 5th place or 6th place to 25th, and 
you know, I looked at the money list and Nick Taylor had me by like $300. And on the Monday, the Monday qualifier, uh, he was right before me, you know, kind of hit a squirrely tee ball. His first had to hit a provisional. And then, you know, he gets walkie talkied in to that he was in the tournament. And I just thought that that quadruple bogey had cost me, uh, to get in the Canadian Open, it may be a good, right? Um, yeah. So mentally, on that Monday, I was just, I, you know, I kind of uh, mind-screwed myself there and was hating the world, and my play really showed it. I shot like 77 on the Monday. Okay. So then I'm thinking, I'm like, man, am I, was I hitting that bad, or, or what was going on? And I went to C-Force, and I shot four under the first day and, um, and, and hit it well. So I'm like, well, that's kind of nice to know that it was probably... Uh, 100% mental why I hit it so poor on the Monday and and just kind of um, it kind of got better as uh, you know the tournament went on I did a lot of good shots and, and um, you know and, and converted some putts when I when I needed to but you know it was nice I, you know I played with Brian on golf three days and I think he's won that tournament two or three times so he knows the course well he, you know he, he drives it straight and he's a great wedge player and it's a short course but um you know, he, he started off birdie, uh, he started off birdie birdie on the last day, and, and I knew I was in for a fight, and, you know, I just kind of uh, stuck around, and, and uh, the back nine, I think I shot six under or something, um, six, five or six under, and, um, you know, felt like I didn't miss a shot, and kind of nice stepping up there, and when, when, when you're in total control of your game, and, and of your thoughts, and, and, uh, and you pull shots off, so, no, it was fun. That's great. Oh, that's that's really good. And congratulations again on on that win. That's a, a nice step for you there. Um, well, I appreciate that. So you know, how do, do, what expectations do you have for yourself now? Are they a little bit different now that you've uh, you know kind of been thinking about your mental game a little bit more, and and maybe you have a new win under your belt? Do you have some some hmm. insight on your expectations? Yeah, but you know, you know, obviously you've heard it before, but you just you know you take. You know, my, my main focus is just next week, uh, my next Canadian Tour event. Obviously, you know, I'd love to get through Q School this year and get to the Tour or Web.com, but, you know, right now I'm just focused on uh, on playing Windsor next week. But, you know, it just seems like everything's much clearer. You know, I I, I think that before I'd work with Doug, um, you know, I, I think internally I had a lot of anger of, Made of why I'm not like I, you know, you're watching your buddies making millions of bucks on the PGA Tour, and here I am playing the Canadian Tour, and you know when I started hitting it bad, it just just it just stayed bad. It, it felt like, but now I'm thinking clear where I'm, you know, I'm breathing, I'm everything's clear. I'm like, okay, well this my ball flight's this, the, it, you know, this has got to be the solution, and I just feel like I have a better grip of myself um, okay. mentally, and, and then. I guess thus I can kind of straighten myself out in the golf course a lot quicker than I used to, and I think that's why the results are showing. You know, you hit a couple bad shots, and everybody's going to hit bad shots. You just kind of got to move on, and yeah. if you can put that behind you and realize what's going on, um, uh, it makes the game a little easier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it kind of sounds to me like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like your discussions with Doug really, you know, you kind of cleared out some clutter and stuff that was getting in your way. More than Pretty you, much. I mean, yeah. that's that's been, uh, I guess, everything, right? So, yeah. um, bottom line, I guess that's that's all we've done. I, I shouldn't say all because it's 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 a process, right? I mean, it's not yeah. it's not a one quick fix here. I mean that. No, for everything, sure. Everything uh, takes time, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. we're still working on on that, and and uh, there's so much to the mental game that people don't really realize, right? Oh yeah. Uh, it's not all okay. Think positive behind this putt, or you know, it's a tight hole. I'm gonna hit it down the middle. There's so much more to it, right? Sure is. Yeah, there's a whole lot to it. And uh, you know, you mentioned that you you kind of have a bit more purpose when you're going out to practice, and you know, around uh, goal setting. Do you do you set goals daily, or or you know, annual goals? Um, and you know, I I guess I was just like a raker. You know, I go and and you know say. I just kind of beat ball after ball, and you know, if my ball was going straight, it was I was hitting it well, right? But yeah. I wouldn't necessarily carry on to the golf course, so sure. Um, you know, you got. I, I think you kind of need to have a purpose with uh, with what you do on the practice range. I mean, I, I I consider myself a really great putter, and I've had a routine for a long time. 
or you know, I'll set a chalk line for alignment mirror for uh, how you're setting up. So I've always had a uh, a purpose when I practice putting, and and that's why I really am a pr pretty consistent putter. So I've kind of carried that over to my long game, and and just you know, visualize different shots, or you know, for example, um, I guess I never had, I've never played this course next week in Windsor, but. You know, we play Scarborough for the Tour Championship in a couple of weeks. You know, maybe today I'll go out there and, and just play Scarborough mentally on the range, right? Yeah. And then when you get up to the tee, the first tee, you know, it, felt like, it feels like you've played the course uh, a little more than, you know, once or twice, right? Yeah, most definitely. So do you, do you, is that a habit of yours now to visualize some shots on the course before you, before you play a tournament round? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it just kind of takes the, the repetitivity. Of, like, it, it, I guess real golf is not hitting 15, 7 iron straight, right? Right. So, I mean, you hit a driver, you hit a wedge, or you hit a 5 iron, and, 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 you, and you do it that way. So I find that it's helped me just, you know, I'll hit a 3 wood on the range and then an 8 iron to a certain, you know, tree or flag or... Um, and I think you kind of get a better understanding of, of how you're hitting it than just to kind of get a feel, because anybody can tie the 7-iron up after 15 balls, right? Yeah, so yeah. I don't really think you're doing much if you're just kind of wailing away, unless you're doing some kind of a drill sure. uh, that you want to kind of ingrain to your swing. Um, but, you know, if you're just stepping up there and hitting 7-iron after 7-iron or whatever it be, I don't think you're really getting much done. No. So do you use that visualization as well for sort of figuring out how you're going to manage or strategize your course management, if you will, for, you know, in a tournament? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, before Q School last year, I, I, I played this, this course. And, you know, I think even a couple weeks before the tournament, I visualized on what what the play was, right? Like, uh, is it three-wood or hybrid? And I, I, I always had a pretty uh, – well, now I do. I have a better – understanding of my game plan before I even step on the first tee, which, which makes decision-making a little easier, right? So yeah. um, I think that's important, too. Uh, you got to have a good game plan. And, um, you know, um, I think the biggest thing is if, if for the regular amateurs, if they can get it and play off the tee, it kind of makes a, everything a little easier. And sometimes that might be just uh, taking a different club to open the open the fairway up or, or something as simple as that. Yeah, okay. Um I think that's good advice for sure. Um, you know, I've been asking all of the different players that I've interviewed to just kind of take us through, um, you know, your pre-shot routine, whether it be for a putt or, or a full shot, um, you know, kind of the process that you go through right from, you know, getting to the ball and even before if that's part of it and up to hitting the shot. If you Can you take us through that? Uh, well, with putting, it just, it just happens. I mean, I... Uh... Like I said, I have a routine when I practice putting. Like, I line my logo up, right, or, like, to draw a line, my ball for alignment. But I also train my eye with, like, with the with the chalk line. Yeah. So every putt I hit, you know, I'll line up the the my ball, the line with the, with the chalk line and run my eyes down the line, right, just to just to train my eye with square and then set up, take a practice practice stroke and, and hit it. And I do that every time I hit a, a practice putt. So when I get on the course, it's just kind of second nature. Okay. I, you know, I don't really want. Well, I I don't realize that I'm doing it, but I just do it through the practice. Right. On the golf course, I I think I've done the same thing for for a long time. I I you know when when you're confident in yourself and when you know you're hitting it well, you're not really thinking mechanics, or you shouldn't, or you should just have one thought if, if you if you are a thinker. And um, you know, just really uh, kind of look at uh, where I which is maybe not a very good thought, where I don't want to place the ball, right? Let's say if it's a, an approach shot, I'm like, all right, well, you don't really want to short side yourself here. Maybe try to draw it in there and, and you know, aim at the fat part of the green or whatnot. But, um, and then I just kind of kind of swing away. I, you know, like I said, when you're, when you're confident in what you're doing, I think that it's a lot easier to, uh, to um, uh, I guess, hit, good shots, but um, sometimes you can try to talk yourself into, okay, let's, you know, I'm hitting it good, but you're really not subconsciously, you know Yeah, what I mean? yeah, 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 it, for sure. It's almost like you get out of your routine, you get a little quicker, and I saw that caddying for my buddy this past weekend at the club championship where he's in the lead, he got a little nervous, got tight, and everything just really 
that up pre-shot routine, not necessarily in his golf swing, and he started hitting it all over the world and, and lost the tournament, but I just told him after, I said, you got really quick, and most people probably will get quick, so, huh. you know, they need to keep breathing, right? Um, yeah. I think breathing is key to kind of slowing heart rate down and just to, and it clears everything up, and when you're not breathing, you're just, um, well, you, you just get quick and your, your muscles get tight, so I think that's probably the number one thing I would say, if you get behind the ball, you just got to keep remember to breathe you know to breathe and especially on the first tee and when they're, when when you're nervous in general right so i think that that would help yeah no that's uh great advice for sure and i think anytime you get in in the heat and in uh you know competition you, people do generally get a little bit nervous and you you know you need to have a strategy to kind of relax and and keep yourself loose and and breathing is a is a great tool to do that for sure um, absolutely so you mentioned a few things there I'd like to capture, and just before we get into that, though, do you, do you use visualization in your pre-shot routine to visualize the shape of a shot or, or even to see the putt roll in before you go through um, hitting it? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that is a good question. Uh, sometimes I, you know, I think uh, the ultimate goal is you want to do it every time, but sometimes it's not always easy to visualize something. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't see the line of the putt. Sometimes I can't see the, the flight of my ball, even though I'd like to. Uh, but sometimes I can, and, you know, when I do, um, it, it helps a lot. But, um, yes, I mean, I, I, I guess to answer your question, I, I do, but I'd like to do it a little better than yeah. what I do. Yeah, okay. Um, and This is going to be kind of a tough question, but I'd like to, you know, get your perspective on it. And, you know, how do you – you've mentioned confidence a few times, and – you know, when you have it, things are going well and it's easy. And when you don't, you're struggling and you're trying to tell yourself one thing, but you kind of know in your subconscious oh. it's not there. You know, how do you define yeah. confidence and how how do you get it? How do you, can you talk yourself into it? Or, you know, what do you do? Or is there anything that you do or, um, to build your confidence? And can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man, I, I think, um, you know, seeing yeah, that... Uh... It's the secret sauce, right? It, it is. I mean, it, uh, and like I said, I, I really think that it's true that, um, you know, it's a feeling, right? Confidence is a feeling you have. I, I, I still don't agree with uh, the terminology saying, oh, what's, I'm hitting it good, this, you know, hit it right here. I mean, if, you're, if you really don't feel inside that you're, you're not going to hit it there, then you probably won't. Um, that being said, I remember in Fort McMurray uh, about a month ago on the Canadian Tour, I, I wasn't hitting it very well. And, it was a tight course, and I knew I wasn't hitting it well, and I don't know why I wasn't hitting it well. I mean, obviously there was there was reasons why, but um, I, um, you know, I remember just looking at these tight holes, saying, "Oh man, like this is just not good, right?" I'm like, "Where, where is this ball going?" And um, and I, you know, I'd made the cut, and you know, I didn't have a great uh, tournament, but then the next week it was um, it was I think it was. Uh, Saskatchewan, and I just kind of thought about my golf swing. I'm like, all right, well, it'll be okay. This is your ball flight. It can't be. You're probably getting a little under it. So let's do something to our to my setup and put a little more weight left. So you know, I'm not kind of getting under it and hooking it. And and it, I just kind of had uh, immediate uh, results where for me. And once I saw a couple balls go straight and the feeling of a good shot, it just carried over to the tournament and. I shot 62 the third round and was one back of the lead and, and had a good week. So didn't win the tournament, but hit it really well in the last day, just didn't make any putts. And I just think confidence for me was just maybe having one simple thought. It wasn't really a, a major swing thought. It was just, uh, say, wait more left or something and, and swing away, right? So yeah. um, I think simpler the better for people for me that's my mentality maybe some people are technical thinkers but uh for me it was just one one little thought and honestly like five minutes on the range it was 10 balls i'm like that's it and then boom yeah i into i i just instantly had confidence i don't know why it was just i just saw the ball go straight i'm like that's it and it, it, it was it so um yeah, no, that's... Uh, that I've, was it for me, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's different for everybody, right? But it, it is, yeah. I, I know I know deep down that if I'm hitting it poorly, then then I know I'm hitting it poorly, and, and 
uh, then things aren't going to go so good. But um, I don't know. Confidence is a weird deal where, um, you know, you really have to believe in yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, no, no, that that's definitely true. Do you think that using self-talk and affirmations that, you know, telling yourself certain things, I mean, obviously you can't fool yourself if you're not, if things aren't going well, but do you think that repeating different phrases and and positive things can influence your confidence and, and contribute to, you know, building more confidence and improving your game? I, th I think absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I always kind of bring up, like, uh, I've played college golf with Lord Sabatini, and he was one of those guys where, watch me, watch me. You know, like, he didn't have the best golf swing in the world, and I saw him hit a lot of really bad shots, but it seemed like nothing was ever his fault, which I think for him, makes him one of, the, one of the best players in the world, right? Because he really believes in himself. Right. Uh, he really believes he can hit this shot. He knows he's the best in the world and, and all, and et cetera, et cetera. Where me, I always doubted myself, right? I'm like, eh, man, he's pretty good. Uh, man, uh, can I beat him or something like that, right? Yeah. But, but Rory, like, really believed in himself and, and his ability. And everybody's got different golf swings, ball flights, um, everything else, but if you can really believe in, in your game and just play your game, and if, you don't, if you're not a long ball hitter, don't try to carry the leg. Just kind of lay up or go left or go right and yeah. just kind of get it done your way, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It, there's just not way, there's just, just not one way to play golf, right? Yeah, no, there isn't. That is true. There's, uh, there's a lot of different methods out there. Um, I, I a couple just a you know a couple more questions. You had mentioned that you had worked a little bit with Mike Weir. He was sort of a mentor of yours, maybe a while ago, maybe still. I'm just wondering, you know, is that relationship still going? And and what have you picked up from Mike either in the past or even now? Um, you know, if that's contributed uh, to you. Yeah, that was a mentor thing. Just I was coming out. I was just turning pro, and uh, yeah, you know, we exchanged numbers there, and. You know, he. You know, we. Every time I see him, he's he's pretty cool. And you know, I saw him recently at the Honda this year when I was going out to watch my buddy play, and uh, we're at the Bears Club and uh, having lunch, and he was in the next table, and I hadn't seen him in a while, and we just kind of caught up there. But yeah, you know, from what um, earlier in his career, earlier in my career, he was very disciplined, right? So yeah, um, like what I, what I told you, you know, do things other people aren't willing to do, right? Um. Yeah, and I think just why what made what made Mike so successful was just his confidence in himself and and being very disciplined, um, you know, uh, disciplined and you know even watch practice to this day he's always got he's always structured. I know he's struggling right now, but you know hopefully he can get his game back to where it uh, should be. But um, yeah, I just think discipline, structure, um, and just uh, just. You know, hard worker. Yeah, yeah. No, um, he he does do that. And I never, I, I, I didn't really uh, young and and <laughs> young and stupid. I guess I didn't really listen to him early on in my career. But you know, I figured uh, I got a second chance at life after this accident, and I'm going to put 110 percent into it. So I'm listening to him now. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, no, I I can tell you're you're definitely a lot more focused and. Uh, you know, talking about, you know, friends that you've gone to see, and, and I know that you're, you're a social guy, how important are, you know, your peers, and, and I guess on, on the mental side of golf, do you, you know, do you talk to any people, any other players and friends of yours about the mental side of the game, and how important are they to your success? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah, actually, that Canadian Open week, a couple buddies of mine, uh, you know, Ricky Barnes, Charlie Hoffman, they rented a house, and I spent Wednesday night there and then just drove to C4 Thursday morning, and then I, I also spent the night there on the weekend. And I guess the mental side is a touchy subject, right, with everyone. They don't really want to uh, tell them they're working with somebody, or, or I wouldn't, I don't know about that, but they don't really, everybody's different, I guess, right, with the mental side. And yeah. I wanted to watch Ricky because we, we were in together for seven years and uh, at the last day of the Kane Open. Uh, he struggling a little bit and then I talked to his caddy you know his, his caddy was the first one to tell him he's like yeah I think he needs to go see a sports site right now yeah and uh you know he's one of those guys where um 
when he's not playing good golf, he just needs a friend, right? For right. example, like I, I never talk to Ricky about golf. It's good or bad, you know, I'll say, hey, good playing or whatever, but, you know, we just don't talk about golf. So right. I don't know what he thinks uh, um, about the whole mental thing, but I think what makes him good is that he can escape from good or bad or when he's playing well, you know what I mean? Like he, yeah. what, when things are going bad, he's got his, you know, he's just got a baby now or, or we would go to Vegas for a weekend, for a night, so he could clear his mind and then fly back to a tournament and he'd refocus and play well that week. People have different strategies of, of getting refreshed. Um, but, it, you know, it, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think Hoffman's breakthrough was why well, I was with his breakthrough. We both Monday qualified for a nationwide event back in the day and he came second and kind of went that way. But he also got uh, pulled over for a, a drunk driving, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I remember driving to court in Scottsdale, and, and I think he realized if I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to do it now, and he went out and did it. So I think, um, and that goes back to the regular life of Doug and I, right, of cleaning up my life to achieve better golf. So, yeah. um, you know, I think everybody's different. Um, you just kind of have to figure out what works best for you, I guess. I don't know. I mean, golf's a, a crazy game. Yeah, no, for sure. I just, I find it interesting that, you know, so many people, when it comes to golf psychology, they really don't look at it or look into it or seek any help um, unless they think there's a problem. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people that are, you know, good and maybe even great players could, you know, if they if they put time into it and focused on it a little bit, you know, even from going from being a, a really good player to getting a little bit better as opposed to um, just going when there's when there's a problem and people are struggling and they need to refocus. But, uh, but yeah, every, it seems that's uh, what most people seem to take as, uh, you know, the time to start looking at golf psychology. And, um, you know, I find that kind of interesting too. But, but it sounds like, uh, you know, I, I mean, everybody has their own way about going, going about it. And, um, you know, that's why I'm, I'm kind of having, doing these interviews is to, you know, pick up more information and share that information so people can get, you know, a perspective from the best players and, and, um, you know, work on improving their game, not just going to look at ways to get better when they're, when they're struggling. So, uh, right. Yeah. I think the, why I did it was because I was, you know, say winning tournaments early in my career, uh, having fun, but I, I was also hitting it better. Um, you know, say a few years ago, but was missing cuts and wasn't getting any results. So I'm like, what, what is going on? Right. You know, obviously the combination of uh, mental work and, and just enjoying yourself. At the end of the day, it's a game. And if you don't enjoy it, then, you know, you're probably going to be grumpy out there and miserable. And obviously, you know, that has a, a you know, your attitude has a huge part of, of uh, even though you don't know, uh, has, a, has a big part on how you swing the club. Yeah, it does. I, and I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, a few of the guys that I've talked to have, you know, almost every one of them has mentioned about having fun and enjoying the game and, and keeping it as a game. Because, you know, when when you were going through the uh, the Monday qualifier for the Canadian Open, it's not hard to tell that you weren't enjoying it. You were, you know, it sounds like you were yeah. frustrated. You know, you, you saw Nick get in and and knew you yeah. could have been in and, and you thought about the what ifs and could have beens and sort of thing. And and, yes, uh, exactly. And then all of a sudden, I'm hitting off the world. I'm like, "Where's this coming from?" And yeah. it just kind of escalated, where I just couldn't. Uh, you know, I guess I was finished before I even teed off. You know, mentally, and then that just kind of it just took its toll on the whole day. Yeah. So I guess you know, having worked with Doug and and gone through all the experience that you have in golf, you know, do you have any any drills now or anything? that you use to improve your mental perspective and, and your confidence and kind of get you refocused on those days that, that you do struggle with, you know, being frustrated with certain things or when things aren't going your ways or anything you try to yeah, do? Just, you know, the breathing. Like, I, I got into the yoga a while ago, but, you know, at the, at the end of every class, you're like, okay, well, clear your mind and breathe, and you did you're supposed to do that for, like, you know, four or five minutes. Well, I'm thinking what I'm going to eat, eat at night, what, what I'm going to do that night, what, what the, what I was going to do tomorrow. And I could never do that. And then he's like, you have to, you have to clear your mind. I mean, this is a drill. It's an exercise. So, uh, I did that every day for a while. I need to, I need to get back doing that, but it's almost like meditation where you just, 
you, you, you do some deep breathing and just try to, if the thought comes through your mind, just clear it away, right? Right. Uh, it's not a bad thing that a thought comes into your mind because it probably will, but you just have to try to avoid it and just let it go so you can just relax, right? And for me, I think the result was just feeling, uh, um, I, I, I was thinking more clear on the golf course, right? Like I just felt like I was in control mentally. If, you know, if a bad situation occurred, if I had a plug line, a bunker, if I hit a bad shot out of bounds or something, it was a lot easier for me to recover than it was in years past or than what I've noticed. So right. um, that goes back to the breathing. Something very simple, but um, it's tougher than people. It's, it's, it's a lot difficult than I thought it would be, but it, it really it helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, um, you know, Derek, it's been uh, it's been great chatting with you here today, and and I really appreciate getting your perspective on all this stuff. I mean, I hear, I remember, uh, you know, seeing you play ten years ago, and and uh, I know I can tell from talking to you that things have changed quite a bit. You're really focused and disciplined. You got a lot more structure and and trying to have fun with it at the same time. So. Um, you know, I, it's a great attitude to have, and obviously it's brought you success with your Seaforth win. And, um, you know, just before I let you go, do you have any, any final word for, uh, for the listeners on any advice or, or anything for, uh, on the mental side of golf? Well, like I just said, like, enjoy it. You know, uh, for the most part, golf is a very difficult game. And, um, you know, I, I see a lot of people getting angry and frustrated, but, um, you know, if you could turn that anger into just uh, it, just to calm yourself and breathe and just realize uh, that, you know, your your ball does something for a reason. It's not the end of the world if you hit a bad shot. You just kind of got to regroup and move on and, and learn from it. But I think if you can learn from your mistakes and, and grow, then that's how you truly get better. Yeah, great advice. I think, uh, you know, having that right attitude and, and focused on learning and growing um, you can can't go wrong. I mean, failures uh, failure equals success in in many ways. If you can learn from the past and and change uh, what you do down the road, so um, absolutely, yeah. So thanks again, Derek. I uh, really appreciate your time and uh, keep on track and keep on going. And and I'm sure things will work out great for you. You bet. Appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, Derek.